Today, I'm here to talk about something else that's very infectious in our culture, and that is electric... electric scooters. Commuting is nothing new, but being able to rely less on your car or nix the car altogether is a completely new option for commuters. If you don't really count sort of like pedal bikes, I guess. But you don't have to rent in order to experience the benefits of this new electric revolution. Coming alive! Whoa! And I end up busting. Ain't made it all of you bucket heads and you went to thuggers. I'm quick to touch, so I'm sick of muscles. I'm here for trouble. I pick up the world and I drop it. Bitch, acknowledge my hustle. I'm out of my mind, my brain out of control. I'ma blow on a beat like you, powder your nose. Embody your bit of sense with a lot of destruction. But my mama loved me anyway, so you can't tell me nothing. Ain't I so f disrespectful? Aim it with a 38 special, I may bless you. Moving with a crew of deceptives and an SU. V, I'm very sure that you will bleed. You try and test us. So on hand, I have a couple of scooters to sort of show you what I'm talking about. Um, I have the Ninebot Max scooter, which is sort of indicative of like a typical uh, rental scooter from one of the big companies. Then I also have two other scooters. I have the E2 GT, and then I also have the Turbo Wheel Swift. Um, two scooters that have a little bit different sort of feel, price point, and sort of all in all specs that I feel like will give you a kind of a gamut, at least a starting point of what a scooter that you could purchase might feel like and what the specs would be. Now I need to say up front that there are scooters that you can purchase from E-Wheels that are much beefier, much more powerful, and there are scooters that are a lower price point, lower specs. So there's a spectrum. So I, I just kind of pick two that give you like a starting point for each of those sort of directions. So with the rental scooter scenario, uh, whether you're renting from any of the big companies or maybe a newer company that's popped up, here are what I think are the major downfalls. Uh, number one, let's just get it out of the way, germs. I'm not really a germaphobe and I didn't think about it all that much till rental scooters and bikes became a thing. Um, but you have no idea who and what was touching those handles prior to you touching them. I mean, like think about all the hands that have touched that. And I'm willing to bet most people are not going to Clorox wipe down or Purell down or whatever, spray down uh, an electric scooter before they ride. Uh, number two, and these aren't really in any specific order, battery. For the purposes of making them affordable to sort of you know, purchase and roll out thousands of these things in cities across America or the world, the battery life you get out of them is not gonna be super amazing. And what that comes out to is range and speed. Uh, but I think more importantly, range is something very important to someone who's renting a scooter. Um, you don't want to have to show up and go, oh crap, this one has 10% battery. Oh crap, this one has 30% battery. It would just be nice to know that you had control over the fact that you know you've got 100% battery when you're ready to go commute to work or to wherever to go back home. The other thing that's a big con for this electric rentals is the wear and tear. When you jump onto an electric scooter, that little digital um, odometer, speedometer, little screen, it can't tell you what the guy before you did to run that thing into the side of a wall. It can't tell you that there might be some screws loose, some bolts loose. It can't tell you that the brakes are shot. So the last thing you'd want is to hop on an electric scooter and you're riding down the road and you realize when you have to crank on those brakes that they aren't working very well. But in general, you have no idea what the person before you did or the person before them.
All right, so to contrast that, obviously for a purchased scooter, you know exactly who's touching it. It's your germs. Uh, if you let someone else touch it, you're aware, and that's up to you. For wear and tear, you know exactly how you've ridden this thing. You know if you've hit too big of a bump. You know if you've crashed. You know if you've been throwing it on the side of the road or throwing it in your apartment or your house or your garage. Uh, you know every piece of that puzzle as far as how you've been treating your electric scooter. And when things do go wrong, a majority of the time it's something you can just easily tweak, tighten, adjust, fix, and if not, you can make the purchase. Or maybe it's still under warranty, you can get a free replacement for that part. But the real main thing is like you have peace of mind that because it's yours, I mean, I feel like this kind of goes without saying, but when you own something, like you take ownership over it, you're actually gonna probably take care of it more because you own it than somebody who was renting an electric scooter. And lastly, the big pro to owning an electric scooter is the specs. You know exactly what you're paying for. You can go down the list, you can compare the specs of all the plethora of different scooters out there and figure out what's best for you. So maybe your price point is like $1,000 and you can find something in and around that $1,000 range that gives you the best of the best. It's gonna give you good acceleration, good speed, good range. And obviously some electric scooters come with shocks, some don't, some have tubeless tires, some have air-filled tires. These are all the little things that go along with this. It's not terribly complicated, but they all kind of add up to a really nice experience if you want to own an electric scooter and use it for commuting or even just riding for fun on the weekends. But you guys let me know in the comments down below. Do you live in a city that maybe has these electric scooters for rent? Would you consider purchasing one? So we've kind of seen what these scooters do, but uh, I wanted to get somebody who is not a regular rider of anything electric really to sort of get their thoughts on it. Someone who's probably a little interested potentially in diving into this space. Um, so I brought my buddy Alex here. You've probably seen him in other vlogs in the past. He was in uh, the vlog for the NYEF event. Uh, he was the cyclist that was I was helping him move. I'm gonna have him try out a couple of the scooters. One, the Ninebot Max because uh, that's indicative of a typical lift or lime scooter. Uh, and then I'll have them try out the E2 GT. Again, hopefully I have made my case that owning anything personal electric vehicle related, whether it's an e-scooter or an electric unicycle or an e-board, makes so much more sense to own it than to rent it. But go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, notification bell will help you see when the next video is uploaded. Yeah, I'm trying to get a few videos out a month, definitely, so stay tuned for that. That's all I have for you today. Everyone stay safe, stay home, listen to what the government officials are saying so we can get through this all together, because remember, we are all in this together. And I'll see you on the next one. Keep riding. E2 GT. Oh, I'm Vinny, Vinny. What's up? I'm Asica. What? 45? Rich. Uh, Real world. 12 and a half. That's not horrible. That's that, like gunning it for like all the time. No, real world, like, yeah. That's that. It's like aggressive riding, 12 and a half. Yeah, get a uni. <laughs>